People's lives are being destroyed by our government. Our government is doing that. And we're the ones that are putting them in office. We have to stop it. We have to take responsibility. We have to look at every child who has been, who has had bombs dropped around them, or who have had limbs blown off of them, who are going hungry, and we have to take personal responsibility for that, and we have to make a change. And we have to make a change right now. and we can't incrementalize it because in the process and in the meantime, there are people who are literally dying right now. We have to own that. That's who we are until we do something different about it, until we demand something different. That's who we are. We, all of us, and none of us can try to them it because we are all a part of this country. We are participating. We are participating through our acceptance of social services. We are participating through our businesses. We are participating when we go to our jobs. We are participating. And either we're going to change it or we're murderers. It's really simple as that. We have to take ownership of what we've been doing. And as the Green Party, it's like we have to take our role seriously because there's not a lot of other, there's not another national, there are other parties that are establishing that are, that are good, but as it relates to a national party, the ability to get on the, all of the ballots, to actually have candidates in every city and in every state, and even be able to have a presidential candidate that could eventually become the president, that for, we're the only party that represents these values, peace, People, planet, over profit. We're the ones, the Green Party. We have to, we, we have an important role. We need to stop being fighting. We can't, the activists are not going to accomplish much of anything if they do not have partners inside the government. They have to have partners in the government. If you imagine if, if we if it was a green who was the mayor or was the governor, right? Here. That would that, that would completely be transforming the way people will be responding, the way the government will be responding to the issues of black that Black Lives Matter has and to all those boots on the ground, to all of those protests. You need to have somebody on the inside saying, Don't you hear what the people are saying? The people are saying that they do not want militarized police. And we are therefore going to demilitarize our police. We have to have somebody on the inside of the government who is going to represent what we are saying out there. We have to. Otherwise, we're going to be just getting transformation of what it is that they always keep doing. There are more black men in prison now than there were enslaved. So nothing has really changed. There's more of an impression. There's an impression of freedom. None of us are free. None of us are free. We are all building the wealth of a group of individuals who don't care anything at all about us. We are stuck on in jobs that we hate, being treated like crap all day long, and if somebody treats you crappy, and then you still gotta show up there the next day, you are not free. You are not free at all. If when your child has something important going on in their school, and you can't be there for your child because you have to be at this job, if no matter what this, people, this person does to you, you have to stay in that space, because if you don't, you're gonna lose your home, you're gonna lose your, your food, your basic living ability. You're not free. Those things should never be in jeopardy. We really should be living in a world where nobody has to work, where almost everything is automated. You just do the stuff you love. You love to cook, you cook. Cook for the community. Community come, eat some of the food, like my sister did. That's what we should be doing. That's what our lives should be like now. We've got the technology, we've got the automate. I mean, nobody should be, I mean, it's ridiculous that there are people in Haiti that lost their, their fertile farmland and, or not lost it, like it just, like they couldn't find it, like where to go. Like it was taken from them. 
taken from them, and then factories built on fertile farmland. Like, why would you build a factory there? On fertile farmland, and people are now working 70 hours a week, sleeping at machines to make our Levi's and to make our Hanes underwear. Because Haiti is closer than India, where people shouldn't have been working in those conditions like that there either. We are buying that crap. The, the air quality in China is horrible. I mean, there are places where people have, they, they, they never open their windows. They're, they, they very seldom are the kids on the playgrounds because the air, right now we take air for granted. I do want to remind you guys, there was a time we took water for granted too. We, they're making the stuff we're buying. We are claiming to be, we're claiming to be progressive, but are we embodying that? So we have to, as the Green Party, we have to go into our communities and we have to connect with the organizations. We have to build those organizations up. We have to help connect them with each other. We have to, we have to give voice and then we have to use, connect with that community. From that community, find our candidates, run those candidates and know that those candidates will be supported because they're known by all the other people who are doing this work in this community. And then we will be able to, we'll have the power to actually do what we have to do, which is take over. And we have to actually make this peace and people and planet really be the hierarchy, really be prioritized. Forget about profit. It's not even over profit. It's not even, the, the profit doesn't even need to exist. You know, we need to we start moving towards the eradication of currency altogether. We know that Jill Stein has been working so hard. I mean, she's been working hard. She, she actually didn't even make it to the um, events last night because she, we had to require her to rest. She does work so hard, event to event, driving hours, you know, because she knows how important her candidacy is for all of us who know the insanity of what's going on. She knows that. And so she is working hard. And some people are like, we're working for 5%. She's working to win. You know, and you guys should know that. You know, she's brought herself in this to win it. You know, that's where her heart is. Knowing that it may not be possible, knowing what the reality is, but she still is working to win. And then she's and she's doing that not for herself. She's doing that for us. And she's doing that because of the issues that we believe in. She does understand that we need to be able to provide education to everyone. Everybody. All the way through. If you have to have a college degree to get a job, then you need to be able to get a college degree. That needs to be free. We need to remove that burden of debt. We need to have a peace a peace of initiative, and you know, foreign policy based on international human rights law. We need to stop warring in other countries. You know what I mean? We need to use our power as a nation to make the world better. We need to protect our planet. We need the Green New Deal. We need that. We need to transform our energy and to bring jobs and to make create business opportunities and to lower our, our dependence on foreign resources foreign gas and mineral and energy resources. We need, we need everything that Jill Stein and Ajama Baraka are bringing. We need Ajama's revolutionary understanding of things. We need the fact that he's been, he's willing to talk about the, 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 the issues of white supremacy and patriarchy in our society and that he'll do it as a black man and people need to be able to hear it from a black man. Party is awesome. I thank you guys for accepting me. We've got a lot of work to do, but we cannot give up hope and faith. And these are the moments I cry all the time. All of you, I want to welcome you here to Silicon Valley, Yane. Silicon Valley has a reputation of being the center. How you got started being an activist, I mean, maybe it just happened so young, it was just part of your life. Okay, um, so I'm going to answer that question, but before I do, I want to just say that even though I do believe that currency should not exist, it does, and we need help. So I would like to ask that there's something that we can pass around while we have this little bit of talk for people who can make donations. 
because we need help to, just to make it all the way to the end of the election. We need help, um, but um, as it relates to um, the answer to your question, um, I, as a child in the '70s, saw uh, the television uh, programming where they would, or the commercials where they would have um, the individuals that were hungry, starving. You know, usually they were like in Ethiopia. You remember those commercials in the 70s? They had the Ethiopian children and they were dying of hunger. That is what moved me into activism. I was growing up in a very solid working class family to the point that I thought we were middle class. I didn't really understand the difference. But, you know, we, I had all those things that I needed and it never occurred to me until that moment that some people don't. And, but that haunted me. And I never was able to sit well with me. And the more you go, the more you learn that there's more injustice, there's more inequity, there's more suffering. And I've just always been like, the, my spirit has just never been able to handle any suffering. And if there's any, I want to snuff that out. And so I just, that's, so that's how it started though. Oh, does anyone else have a question? So I really respect your economic issues, but tell me, how can I live a day-to-day -day life and avoid things made in Haiti and India and the real practical things? How do you do it? So I almost never buy new. Um, most of the things, so that's one thing. I, everything, I, almost everything I have either was given to me, this jacket was given to me, this t-shirt was given to me, um, or I got it at a thrift shop. I bought these boots at a thrift shop in Amsterdam. Um, I buy very, very few things um, retail. So that's one way that I avoid supporting um, the consumption idea. Um, but I also, um, and, this, and everybody doesn't need to do the same thing. I also just don't, um, I just don't work jobs. You know, I struggle, you know, but I, I, I do a lot of bartering. Um, I, you know, I share space that's in my house. I mean, there are people who have rented rooms for me, but there are people who I've given rooms for. I had a woman who lived in my house for um, two years and was not required to pay rent. And I was like on welfare. I didn't have it. It wasn't like I could afford that per se, but it's a way that I was able to contribute to like a community and that sense of collectivism. I think that just becoming aware and being committed, things will begin to like stand out. If I do buy things, I usually buy from like people that I know, like these earrings, I know the woman who made these, you know. Um, so, and then that supports the um, individual who is, you know, being entrepreneurial, um, but it also does not support these conglomerates who take advantage of people. I won't go to Walmart. I won't go to Walmart. I won't shop with that. You know, if I do know for sure that a company is exploited, then I won't participate. But it, it's hard to escape the exploitation. It's in our, it's all our technology, right? Everything, everybody's got to be cell phones. We've got our computers, and the exploitation is a core aspect of that. But like, if I was, I wouldn't buy a diamond. You know, like you know, so it, you know, you have, you know, and, you, and there's just a process, you know, that you that you move forward through. Um, but that's that's some of what I do. Um, I have a friend who, when he found out what was going on, he unplugged completely. He closed his business. He left his um, his uh, his home. Um, he left his dog for a while. But he went back and got her and lives in his car. Um, and I have a few friends who do that, and they travel and they stay in host housing. Um, and there are people who that can't do that, but they are setting their homes up to be part of a host housing network so that people who are off the grid and have unplugged and are going from Standing Rock to Oak Flat to, you know, a Black Lives Matter march to a climate rally, that those people have places to stay and have support, you know, so that, you know, some people are unplugging and some people are supporting, are staying plugged in and using that to support those who are unplugging. You know, I think that everybody kind of figures that out for themselves. If you have that in your spirit and you want to, you'll start. It'll start coming to you. But those are some examples. Okay. I have a very quick question. When I tell people I'm going to vote for Jill, they say why, and I wish I had something I could hand out. So I think they should have materials over there. 
at that table okay. that will be able to. Okay. Okay, so, and what was your, what, somebody else told me you had a question too. What was your question? Um, my question is that, first of all, I'm very excited. Uh, I'm very excited that the Green Party has, especially maybe in 2020, um, to really uh, come out even in front. I was a big Bernie supporter. Um, and I guess my question is, given that the Green Party has, uh, a very strong philosophy, um, just like the things up on the wall there. Uh, is there a chance that supporters of the Green Party will be disappointed if uh, compromises need to be made? Okay. You know? So um, I think that um, one of one of the things that Jean Baraka said last night is um, no lies, no fear, and no compromise. So um, that also is a part of this, this energy, you know? So we can't compromise. I mean, people have asked me to run for office in my community for years. I'm like, I don't think so because there's compromises with, and I'm gonna be that person that's gonna be like, no, I'm not gonna let you cut down from trees in, in order to get the education in school. The kids need education. We just need to do that. I'm not, you can't cut, this, you know, I won't get anything done. That's how I felt, you know? But, you know, if you stand firm, and you have this philosophy, and you're articulating this philosophy, and you're putting it out there, then you can also encourage others to have that same courage, so that there are all these other elected officials who now, when I went on that CNN, you know, when I look at it, people are like, oh, man, I don't see it that much like that, you know? But what I do realize happened is that there are all of these people who had not heard anyone representing that position. And so, what I was able to do is I was able to help people to know that they weren't by themselves and to have courage because they saw it and they weren't crazy. You know, they're like, yes, Haiti, yes, Honduras, yes, she's a liar, yes. You know, and I got that. That's what we will have to do. We'll have to embody that when we move in the government. And we're going to be taking over, not just as individuals, we're going to be taking over the philosophy. We're going to be taking over the psychology. We're going to be transforming the spirit of our government as we get in there. And we're going to infect all the other people. And they're going to be like, well, that's really what I wanted to do anyway. And now I have this person with me, so we're going to be able to get it done. That's how we're going to have to do it. And it's not going to matter if they're green or if they're, uh, you know, alternative socialists or if they're, you know, Democrats or if they're Republicans. If we want to make sure all of these kids have food, we're going to be able to do it. And we're not going to compromise. And we're not going to have that problem, therefore. It may be hard work, but we're going to be able to be very effective in being honest and being courageous without compromise. Yeah. And so as it relates to, you know, to what you were saying, again, I really just think that um, you know, it's really just about looking at all the different pieces of your life. Planting gardens, that's another way that you can do it. You know, working with people, you know, and, and one of the things we talked about in our community was or having a collection of gardens that would be organized and you would have a map somewhere central in the community and people would be able to know where they can go, where the different community gardens are and you can harvest those gardens for free. You know, so that's another way. You know, getting involved in the schools. Every school, like now these public schools have um, you know, 40-something kids in the classroom. If you made a commitment to coming in and work with a collection of other parents or other individual adults to coming in, you can cut that, that ratio down in half for those teachers. You know, you can also, um, you can also make a commitment to making sure your children are in public schools and fighting for the public schools. If you have the money for tuition to go into a private school, refund that into your public school and buy resources and get support with your money for things that you know the kids need and that the teachers can use as resources in the schools. Talk about things like unschooling, help building communities where you actually unplug from the educational community that is actually not working for our kids anyway, any of them that's lying to us, all of us, in order to keep us separated, you know? So maybe looking at and exploring with the community the idea of unschooling, where you let the child really like do like Benjamin Franklin and George Washington Carver did and identify what it is that they're passionate about and just dive into that and learn based on who they are and their passions and their gifts and their purpose. 
You know, so, you know, if you're, if you're in, in, in medicine, you know, then there are ways that you can do it through there. If you're in education, a family member, as a woman, you know, it's really, though, just opening your mind and exposing yourself to what other people do, you know, and what's happening and seeing what connects to you and just trusting your heart and going there. Your heart is going to drive you where you need to go. It drove my friend Ed to live in his car, and he is very happy. Sometimes he's stressed, and I have to tell him, that's what this life is like. You have to, there's some things, we live in this kind of world. Money is, is still a part of this world. It's hard, that's part of the life, but you're more free. You're much more free, you're much closer to freedom. You know, that's what you wanted, and you're making a difference. So, that's what his heart told him to do. Just, just stay educated and, and hold your community close, because the more you know, the harder it gets. It's, it's very, very difficult. Like, I've always known that immigration was terrible, but seeing operations streamline and learning what people went through and talking to individuals personally and, and having that closer, it was harder. So, okay, so I have a plane to catch, and the plane will not hold up. Thank you, guys. <laughs>